it is so close. Novak Djokovic reigns in Monte Carlo. He ends Rafa Nadal's eight-year hold on this tournament. How is the sport of tennis that we all know and love today tied to French monks, as the title suggests? Simple. We begin in the 11th century France where the game known as Palm was conceived in the courtyards of French monasteries. A group of monks used a ball made of leather or cork which would be hit by their bare hand with the goal of going over the net and into the opponent's court. In England, the game by now was known as real tennis, gained some popularity during the reign of Henry V. But it really went off with Henry VIII, who during his youth, before his wife killing days, constructed a tennis court in Hampton Court Palace. Also during this time, clear references were made in literature by some guy named Shakespeare, who wrote the play Henry V, in which a basket of balls is given to the king as a form of mockery, or a roast, if you will. Art A clear reference can be seen in the painting of Gian Battista Tiepolo's Death of Hyacinth in which a string racket and free balls can be seen in the bottom of the painting. Real tennis continued to thrive in the countries of France, Spain, Austria and the Italian states, where it was mostly played by the aristocratic elite. Then, all of a sudden, this average at the time height Corsican guy named Napoleon abolishes everything royal in Europe, and with it practically killed the game of real tennis. In the 19th century, real tennis was gone, and with its death, two new sports emerged in England them being raquettes and squash raquettes. In the period of 1859 and 1865, in Birmingham, England, Major Henry Jem and Augurio Pereira combined the previously mentioned sports with Bosque Pelota and played this new game in Eggbeston. Seven years later, they would move to Leamington Spa in 1874, that is, where they joined forces with two doctors and founded the world's first tennis club, the Leamington Tennis Club. With all that being said, the title of the founder of modern tennis goes to a Noel Charmy major, Major Walter Clopton Winfield, who gave a demonstration of the game to Lord Lansdowne in 1869 in his Berkeley Square house. He then designed an hourglass-shaped tennis court in order to obtain a pattern for the sport. The furthest he got with this was a copyright, which he never renewed, and it would expire in 1877. He would name his game Spariestike, with similar rules to modern tennis, which he then took to an 1875 meeting in London's Marybone Cricket Club to certify them. None of them were certified, and his Spariestike names were washed down to Sticky. Nevertheless, he made a huge impact on tennis by popularizing the game, beginning a marketing campaign in which he sold lawn tennis playing sets with all necessary equipment and a manual with both his version and the official one, plus it was all affordable. And because of these conveniences, the game spread like wildfire all across Britain and her colonial empire, as well as the USA. By the time of the late 19th century, the game was played in all of the English and French-speaking countries, and prompted the players of these countries to form tournaments as a way of professional competition. In total, there are four. Wimbledon, the US Open, French Open, and the Australian Open. The first one is Wimbledon, who was formed in 1877 by the All England Lawn Tennis and Crockett Club to raise money for the club. The first championship there was contested by 22 men, and the winner got a Silver Glit Cup. The next year it was recognized as the official British Championship and was open to international competitors. The next one is the US Open. It first started off in 1874 in Anhead, Massachusetts, when James Dwight and Richard Dudley Sears played the first game of tennis in the US. Seven years later, tennis became popular enough to be competitively played in the clubs. In 1880, in New York City, the first American national tournament was played at the Staten Island Club and Baseball Club, but the rules differed in each and every one of them. And on May 21st, 1881, they officially joined up and formed the U.S. National Lawn Tennis Association to organize competitions and standardize the rules. Finally, the U.S. Open started off as the U.S. National Men's Singles Championship and was first held in 1881 at Newport, Rhode Island, while the women's singles were first held in 1887 in Philadelphia. 
The French Open dates back to 1891, back when it was known as the Championnat de France International de Tennis, but became recognized as a major after only 34 years since its creation. The Australian Open was first played in 1905 as the Australasian Championships, or meaning Australian New Zealand. In 1924, it becomes one of the four majors. Three years later, it is renamed the Australian Championships, due to the New Zealand officials releasing their commitments. Despite this, it still remained unpopular due to Australia's remote position. But it all changed only 64 years later, in 1988, with the strategic decision of moving to Melbourne Park, where it finally gained the popularity as the other three. Tennis as a sport is divided into two eras, the pre-open era and, you guessed it, the open era. We begin with the pre-open era, meaning it was before the open era. Here players were separated into professionals and amateurs. The professionals being majority people from the middle and lower class, who had to play tennis to earn a living. Also, they weren't allowed to compete in any of the majors. The amateurs came from the upper class and were viewed as athletic gentlemen, so they did not play tennis for money, and they could compete in the majors without any money to earn. Many amateurs hated this for obvious reasons, so turned professional and began to go on private sponsored tours. A great example for this is Suzanne Langland, who upon turning pro and signing a contract with CC Pyle, earned more money from a single North American tour than for the 14 years she played as an amateur. The split between professional and amateur continued for more than 40 years, until 1968, when the ILTF finally gave to the pressure and allowed players to compete in Grand Slam tournaments. And just like that, 1968 became the first year of the Open Era. In 1967, George McCall created the National Tennis League, a tour for pro male players. Three years later, it would be sold to its rival, the World Championship Tennis, a tennis league managed by Lamar Hunt. Their influence grew enough where its promoters began manipulating the game for their own gain. But the former US 40s and 50s champion turned promoter Jack Kramer created a Grand Prix tennis circuit in late 1969 to defy them. He described it as a series of tournaments with a money pool that would be split up on the basis of accumulative points system, meaning the quality of your game would be matched by the same quantity of money. Next, in 1970, few players showed up for the 1970 French Open and the ILTF and its president in April approved of Kramer's proposal. The power struggle between the two circuits led all of the players to join up in September of 1972 at the US Open and form a syndicate to protect themselves from the promoters and associates, which resulted in the creation of an association of tennis professionals, or ATP for short. Sure. In 1919, the ATP replaced the MTC as the governing body of men's professional tennis. In 2000, the Super 9 was renamed into Master Series, being worth 500 points. The Grand Slams were worth 1,000 points. And the International Series Gold became known as the Championship Series, ranging from 250 to 300 points. In 2009, the Masters events were renamed into the ATP World Tour Masters 1000, with the International Series goal becoming the ATP World Tour 500, and the remaining events becoming the ATP World Tour 250. And those are the changes and evolution the sport of tennis has endured for the past 900 and more years. Today, tennis is the fifth most played sport, with an estimated 87 million people playing it worldwide. Also, it is the sixth highest paying sport.